Slow living is not about the gardening. It's not about the cooking. Slow living goes down to the root, the basics. Being patient with your life journey. A lot of the time I see on YouTube videos that are very focused on, you know, the hygge, ceramic cup in a cozy blanket on an autumn day. You know, they make things from scratch with a wooden spoon and make all the herbs in my garden and I have to move to the countryside so that I can indulge in peace and simplicity. No. Hello my friends, I hope you are having the most magical day. My name is Helena and I run the blog called Simple Joys. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 misconceptions or stereotypes that people may have about those who talk about slow living or people who adopt a slower pace of life. If you are beginning your slow living journey, you may notice a few of these stereotypes or misconceptions that I personally had when I was beginning my journey with slow living, specifically with YouTube. Let's jump right into it. Number one, minimalism. You do not have to be a minimalist to enjoy a slower, simpler life. A lot of the major creators and hosts and influencers that talk about slow living, they often talk about minimalism. And often their homes are completely empty with white bare walls, of just a few possessions in your home that you really love and not much else. But as you can see here, <laughs> a lot of the time I see on YouTube videos that are very focused on, you know, the hygge, ceramic cup in a cozy blanket on an autumn day with very little paintings on the walls. And, you know, they make things from scratch with a wooden spoon, you know, and that's all great. And like, I'm totally into it totally into it. However, that is, I think, a common misconception. And I think it might be a little distracting to people who are new to the slow living lifestyle, to people who do want to begin their journey with living a slower, simpler life. And I have to garden and make all the herbs in my garden and I have to move to the countryside and have to have a cozy blanket with nothing on it because simple is better so that I can indulge in peace and simplicity. No, I'm saying you don't have to follow any of those rules and you can absolutely adopt a slower simpler way of life you can absolutely have a more whimsical delightful vibrant colorful bold aesthetic and you don't have to follow the whole minimalist philosophy or the minimalist aesthetic to be into slow living I also think another common misconception which I definitely had that belief going into slow living and into creating a YouTube channel was that you have to garden you have to garden. I follow a lot of YouTubers that are in the same niche as I am of slow living and the vast majority of them all have a garden and they're all planting their own vegetables and stuff. That is amazing and I can't wait for the day when I have my own garden. Like I'm dreaming of that life. <laughs> but you don't have to have a garden. You can absolutely live in an apartment in a city and not even have a balcony garden to enjoy a slow lifestyle. I think when you type in slow living on YouTube, you will find a lot of videos that have to do with gardening, slow cooking, making things from scratch, planting your own plants and vegetables. Slow living is not about the gardening. It's not about the cooking. Slow living goes down to the root, the basics of enjoying your time on earth and being patient with your life journey and appreciating the process and having a balanced lifestyle, a balanced approach to viewing life. Slow living is a lifestyle. It is a life philosophy, not a to-do list of things that you need to do in order to qualify as a slow, living person. I don't even know if there's a word for a slow living person or like person who enjoys slow living. I don't even know how you would say that. Yeah, I don't even know how you'd say that. One of the common misconceptions I see among slow living YouTube channels and blogs is that you can't really have this loud, crazy personality. <laughs> I've noticed um, a similar trend among many, many slow living channels or people who are into like the slow lifestyle, sustainable lifestyle, simple 
living movement. Um, there's a lot of like emphasis placed on like being peaceful and meditative and having a quiet, peaceful voice. Coming about slow living from a very meditative and reflective place. And I think it's so beautiful and I definitely am like that at times. But I felt like there wasn't a place for me on YouTube. I felt like I didn't really belong in the slow living YouTube community because I do have a really big personality and I've noticed that many of them um, create very peaceful videos. And while I do create some peaceful videos, in general, my go-to personality is very hummingbird-like. My flutter my wings very quickly. And so if you are also beginning your slow living journey and you also feel like you don't relate to the slow living stereotype or whatever like i did um know that you're not alone and you can absolutely be a very passionate intense fiery um bold personality if you also have noticed that stereotype or that's a misconception that you have um, you can absolutely be who you are and stand tall as who you are with your personality and whatever it may be and adopt these lifestyle changes and habits that are more aligned with the slow lifestyle. Another common misconception or stereotype about people who are into slow living is that we are boring. What? How crazy is that? It's all relative, right? It's all relative. People who are living a very fast life that are hustling really hard, that don't take time to smell the roses and indulge in life's pleasures, they will look at people who are into slow living and they will think that life looks boring. That doesn't look fun to me. But that's their perception. Everything is a mirror. Everything has a filter on it. Everything that you see or I see or anyone else sees, they have a filter at which they perceive life through. If you're someone who's into creating things, making things, having hobbies, being playful and whimsical and enjoying life, slow living is like the opposite of boring. <laughs> Slow living is so fun because you get to actually take the time to enjoy life. You get to actually take the time to celebrate whatever it is you're doing because you're slowing down. And it's when we slow down and really pause and like feel appreciation and a sense of gratitude for whatever it is that we're doing that we're able to have more fun. If you've done any sort of research on Google or YouTube about slow living, you will most likely have found this misconception. You do not have to be into cooking or planting or slowly cooking to be in the slow lifestyle. I am someone that hates to cook. Literally, it is the like is the thing that I cannot stand to do is cooking. I'm lucky that I have a husband who loves to cook and it is, it is one of his greatest hobbies. So I'm really lucky with that. Another very obvious common misconception about slow living is that people who are into slow living don't wanna live in cities. You do not have to live in the countryside or a small village to have a slow lifestyle. You can absolutely live in a major metropolitan city and have a slow lifestyle for yourself. Personally, I used to live in New York City for five years and I was living a very rushed hustle, go, go, go mentality. Looking back, I wish that I had learned all of the things that I have learned now living in France and taken these habits with me to New York City. When we're intentional with our habits and we choose to let certain bad habits die and embrace newer, slower ones, we can absolutely thrive in major cities cities. You can totally live in New York and adopt a slower way of life. Living is about peacefully enjoying your time on earth. It's about valuing the time that you do have and enjoying it and celebrating the simple pleasures and simple joys of your life. And even if you're in a major city and your life is very rushed, maybe you do have a lot of things on your plate, this is the time to be intentional, to ask yourself what is vital, 
what is essential to my life? What is essential so that I can thrive and feel completely lit up in life? And get rid of the things that don't let you up. Get rid of the things that are not vital to your well-being. And you can do that anywhere. You can do that in a small island off of Indonesia. You can do that in Los Angeles. You can do it anywhere. Um, it's about changing our habits. It's about changing our perspective. Slow living is a process and it's about implementing certain habits into your daily routine so that you can live a slower life that is aligned with you. Taking the time to appreciate what you have now and relishing in that and having gratitude for what you have now, you can do that anywhere. You do not have to live in a city and you do not have to live in the country. You don't have to live in a small little Alsatian village in the middle of the French countryside like I do. That is a common slow living misconception that is wrong. Another common misconception is that we're preachy. I recently learned this misconception from a Facebook comment that someone had made in a Facebook group. And they said that slow living YouTubers are not liked and that people try to avoid them on YouTube because they're very preachy. Whew. It's all relative, right? And it's interesting because she compared slow living YouTubers to vegan activists and vegan YouTubers. And to me, the two cannot be more different. Slow living? And veganism, like how are they related? I don't know. Find what works for you, what resonates energetically with you, and then toss out the rest. So slow living is not preachy. Another common misconception is that people who are into slow living are also really into old fashioned things. And that's just not true. I think that is a trend. I think that is something, a stereotype that you may see on YouTube or you may see on blogs, but um, slow living is a way of life. It's not changing your clothes. It's not, you know, trying hobbies just because it's popular or trendy in the Huga community or in the, um, the slow living community on YouTube. You know, a lot of YouTubers that are really into slow living are also really into antiques, vintage, um, old style of dress, old pastimes. And while I also <laughs> am all about the vintage, you do not have to yearn for or wish for an older time um, in order to enjoy the simplicity of having a slower life. Um, you do not have to be a thrifter. You do not have to go to antique stores or do all the hygge things like writing with a feather quill or you know adopting these more vintage aesthetics obviously you can see that i'm really into it i, I love the vintage and the old books <laughs> it is not true that you have to be anti-tech to be into slow living do i think that you need to have all these unnecessary apps on your phone to track your to-do list or your productivity or your water intake or your steps. No, you can thrive without those things, but you don't have to be anti-tech. You can absolutely be on Instagram, on Facebook, on Pinterest, on YouTube. You can absolutely partake on Reddit and forums. You can do all those things and still enjoy a slow lifestyle. I'm so passionate. Woo! So there you have it. Those are the common misconceptions and stereotypes that I have personally noticed in the blogging and YouTube slow living world. I'd also be really curious to know if you are new to the slow lifestyle, have you thought some of these misconceptions? Have you thought some of these stereotypes? I'd be so curious to know if it's just me or if other people have also thought these things while they've been doing their own research on adopting a more slower pace of life. To me, slow living is really about connecting with yourself and understanding yourself and appreciating the time that you do have. And I think that's what slow living really encompasses is valuing the time that we have. How can we use it in an intentional way so that we can feel aligned and joyous in our own life and our own time here? To me, slow living is really about basking in the present moment and enjoying the journey every step along the way, enjoying the time that we have and appreciating the simple joys because that's what's really most important. It's that we're enjoying our time on earth and we're having fun. Slow living, there's no need to be seen. 
There's no need to be busy and to show your productivity to others and to show how you are achieving great things or that you have these things. As I've mentioned before in my What is Slow Living video that I'll include here, slow living is about enjoying experiences rather than things. It's about following the things that light you up and staying true to yourself and staying true to your core values and your desires in, in you and not anyone else's, not anyone else's version of a great life or a joyful life or even my own life. When you watch my videos, I really hope that you can identify what it is the things that light you up that I'm doing and what are the things that you don't agree with that you could toss aside. Find what works for you and toss out the rest. And that's really what this whole channel is about. It's coming back to yourself, coming back to the things that really light you up and following what your heart desires most. And everything else is background noise. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And please comment below what your thoughts are. I'd be really curious to know if you've also thought some of these misconceptions like I have. That's it for me. I hope Hope you enjoy this video have a magical day my friends and i will see you next thursday here on the simple choice